Hi all. In this session, we are going to discuss about advanced peripheral bus. That is APB protocol. Uh, in this session, we are going to discuss APB4 spec uh, specification. That means uh, we have uh, APB2, APB3, APB4, and APB5. But in this session, we are going to discuss APB4. In APB4 also consists APB3. But uh, what is the difference? Is here we have two more signals called uh, A protection, sorry P protection signal and P stroke signal. Only two signals are more in APB4 compared to APB3. Okay. Yes. In this session, we are going to discuss about these concepts like introduction about the APB protocol signals. Means what are the signals are there, and we will see the description of the signal and APB block diagram. We will see the block diagram of the APB. Uh, it consists uh, master and slave. We will see that and operating states. Here, here we have a finite state machine. Like three states we have. We will see that and test cases. What are the test cases of the APB protocol and waveforms? We will see the uh, rate transfer, read transfer waveforms. Then error response and transfers with the piece level error. Okay, these are the contents we are going to discuss. Okay. Let's discuss what is this APB protocol. Okay, APB is nothing but advanced peripheral bus used for low speed devices. Uh, this APB protocol is used for low speed devices. Means for low frequency peripherals, we use this APB protocol to transfer the data. And APB used for single master multiple slave. Single master multiple slave means here we have a one master and multiple slaves. Compared to other protocols like AHB and AXI. There we have a multiple master and multiple slave. But in this APB, we will discuss this uh, AHB and AXI in further future um, presentations. Okay. But now we will understand this APB. Here we have a single master and single uh, sorry multiple slaves. Also here we have a 12 signal. That's why it's a low power consumption. Means APB interface is a low power consumption because we have a 12 signals. Here we have a few signals only. Compared to the protocols, there will be a more signals. So here, since we have a less signals, it is a low power consumption. Also, uh, this low uh, the APB is a part of the AMBA3 protocol family. We know, right? AMBA3 protocol means here we have AHB, AXI and APB. It is also in part of the AMBA3 protocol. And it provides a low cost interface that is optimized for the minimal power consumption and reduces the interface complexity. Yes, it reduces the interface complexity because here we have a few signals, right? So the complexity will be reduced. And then all signal transitions are only related to the rising edge of the clock. I told you, right? Uh, then means uh, the rising edge of the clock means when the clock signal is going from zero to high, that time the this uh, signals will be related. That means the transfer will be uh, taking place. Okay, considered uh, to enable the integration of APB peripherals easily into any design flow. We will see that like, uh, in waveforms we have a, if the clock is uh, from zero to high, then all the other signals will be um, will be asserted or deasserted at any time. So we will consider it when the rising edge of the clock we can um, see. Okay, when the rising edge of the clock will be presented, that time we will consider that signal. That is nothing but all signal transitions are only related to the rising edge of the clock. Then every transfer takes at least two cycles. Yes, in APB, it takes at least two cycles. That means, uh, here since we have a three operating states, right? So, it takes at least two cycles. You will understand why it takes at least two cycles for complete the transfer. Okay. And uh, this last one is half duplex in nature. Yes, here uh, the APB is a half duplex in nature because the transfer is not concurrent. Since it will, the transfer will not uh, take place concurrently. One uh, master will initiate the transfer. After that, the slave will be respond to that. Okay, that's why it's a half duplex. Both cannot perform the transfer at a time. That's why it's a half duplex. Before going to discuss about this uh, waveforms and uh, operating systems or any uh, any further details, first we will understand the timing diagram because this plays a major role. Uh, before you understand the, uh, the waveforms, you need to understand it because we can see these types of signals in a waveform so that then that time you can understand if you know this um, timing diagrams okay yes the first one is a clock you know that you can uh, you know already how the clock looks like right? this is the first one is clock the second one is high to low if the signal is going from high to low it looks like this 
and you can see the shaded part right color gray color part it's the undefined value that means at this time the signal can assume any value okay this the shaded part is undefined value and uh, next one is transient if the signal looks like this you can say that this is the transient state then high or low to high that means high to low the signal is going from high to low and that is the shaded part okay this is the um, timing diagram of the uh, timing diagram of the high to low signal okay then the bus table if the signal is straight lines like you can if you see the signal is like this you can say that this is the stable bus okay then bus to high impedance this is the bus high impedance means single line bus to high impedance then bus change you can see right there are two buses it is changing from one bus to another bus okay this is the shaded part this is undefined value so it is changing from one bus to another this is the bus change state and last one is high impedance to stable bus high impedance to stable bus means uh, if, if the signal looks like this you can say that this is the high impedance to stable bus okay these are all the timing diagram conventions uh, you will see this in the waveforms and if you, if you find this type of signals you need to remember this uh, names what is uh, what this indicates okay yes we will see the signal description now okay before going to signal description i will uh, more some more points uh, to this apb protocol like the apb interface is designed for accessing the programmable control registers of the peripheral devices uh, that means apb peripherals are typically connected to the main memory system using an apb bridge here we have a master and play right that master you can say that APB bridge and for example a bridge from AXI to APB could be used to connect the number of APB peripherals to an AXI memory system that means if a bridge from the AXI to APB could be used to connect a number of APB peripherals to an AXI memory system then APB transfers are initiated by an APB bridge yes here we have master and play master is nothing but an APB bridge so APB transfers are initiated by the master. Always the transfers initiated from the source. Okay, source is nothing but a master you can consider. And APB bridges can also be referred to as requester. In this uh, um, in this slide you can see the source right. I am writing requester and computer. You can see the requester and computer right. Requester is nothing but the APB bridge. Or you can consider master. Master is nothing but who initiates the transfer. So they are called the master or source. This is the requester. This APB bridge also referred to as requester. A peripheral interface responds to that request. That means slave responds to the request which is asserted by the requester side. And APB peripherals can be also called as the completer. Here requester means master, completer means slave. Okay. Then in this specification we will discuss uh, requester and completer. Okay. Now the signal. In this uh, uh, slide you can see the signal name source and description here we have total 12 signals uh, 12 signals means uh, uh, basically in APP3 10 signals are there two signals are more here that is P strobe and P protection signal we will see first one is P clock signal P clock signal is the clock signal this is the global signal we have P clock and P reset TN both are the global signals P, P clock is a clock signal that signals all the APP signals are timed against the rising edge of the P clock we have seen right at the rising edge of the clock the transfers are is considered that means this is the that will be indicated by the peak clock signal pclk you have to uh, you have to take the signals with the prefix p only for ap protocol p is the prefix you can see uh, in uh, h as a uh, prefix in ahv protocol and a as a prefix in um, axi protocol so here in apb we have a p as a prefix for all the signals okay the signal name will be started by the prefix called P. Then uh, P reset signal. P reset signal is nothing but the, the source is from system bus. That is uh, this P, uh, P reset N is a system bus reset source. Okay. Uh, this is the active low signal. Active low signal means when the P reset signal is zero, then the re reset, will, um, reset will be taken place. Okay. This is the global signal N means active low. Uh, then P address uh, before going to that P reset N is normally connected to directly to the system bus reset signal okay then P address 
P address is asserted from the requester side or master side, which is of 32 bit. This address is a 32 bit, and uh, this is asserted from the master side. Then P select. Okay, P select is also asserted from the master side. The P select indicates it is used to select a slave or completed. Okay, it is used to select a slave. We have a multi multiple slaves, single master, multiple slave system, right? This P select signal indicates the particular slave for which the transfer is required. That will be selected by this P select signal. And next P enable signal. This P enable signal also asserted by the master. And this P enable indicates the second and subsequent cycles of an APB transfer. We will understand what is this second and subsequent uh, uh, transfer. Okay, in we have uh, operating states, right? There we have a uh, three states. Then you can understand in second state. Uh, this P signal, P enable signal will be asserted. That's why it is called as a second and subsequent transfer. This P enable indicates. Then a P write signal. P write signal is used to uh, provide the direction of the operation. Nothing but uh, like P, if the P write signal is high, that means write operation is taking place. If the write P write signal is zero or D asserted, that means it is a read operation. So it gives the direction to which uh, operation should take place. Okay. This will be asserted by the master side P red signal. Then comes to the uh, P stroke signal P S T R B. Sorry, here double R are there. Uh, sorry for the mistake. Okay, P S T R B is the P stroke signal, right right stroke. This is only related to the write data. This is not uh, this is not available for read data. Okay, here P stroke indicates which byte lanes to update during the write transfer. Means during the write transfer only. This P S T R B signal, P stroke signal should be uh, high because during the read transfer it must be low. This is only related to the write data transfer. Okay, and uh, the next one is P protection, P prod signal. This is asserted by the master side and it indicates the whether the transfer is normal or privileged or secure or non-secure or if the transfer is a data access or an instruction access. This will be decided by the P prod signal. Okay, this is about the P protection signal. Then PW data. PW data is asserted by the master side. Using this PW data, it will provide the uh, write data. Okay, uh, this write data signal, PW data signal is variable width. I told right, uh, for some signals it has a fixed width and for some other signals it has a variable width. So, this is the variable width signal. PW data can be 8 bit, 16 bit or 32 bits wide. So, Basically, we will consider the 32 bit wide uh, write data. And next, P ready. This last three signals are asserted from the slave or completed. This will be uh, given by the slaves. Okay, P ready, PR data, and P slaver. P ready is nothing but this is asserted by the slave side, which indicates that our slave is ready. Means transfer uh, transfer can be uh, taken place if the P ready is high. That means P ready is used to extend an APB transfer by the completer. If the slave wants to expand the data, that time it can pro assert the P slave error. Okay, uh, the I told you right here we have a, a weighted transfer and non weighted transfer. This uh, weighted transfer will take place only when the P ready signal is high. So that weight will be decided by the P ready signal. When we want to perform any weighted transfer, we have to play with this P ready signal. Okay, then PR data. PR data is read data, read data signal. Uh, the width of the write data and read data both should be equal. Means if we can, if we are taking the write data with as a 32 bit, P, PR data should also 32 bit. Okay, it it also variable width. It also has a variable width 8, 16, or 32 bit. And then uh, this will be asserted by the slave. Okay, then P slave error. P slave error also asserted by the slave. I told you, P slave error is nothing but when any um, if the slave finds any error in the transfer, that time it can assert the uh, P slave error. That means P slave error is an optional signal. It is optional, it is not mandatory, and that can be asserted high by the slave to indicate an error condition on an APB transfer. If the transfer is taking place and APB sorry APB slave finds any error, it can assert the P slave error signal. We will see detail about the slave error in further slides. Next, the APB block diagram. Uh, here we have APB master and APB slave. APB master is nothing but the APB bridge you can consider. And APB slave are nothing but the APB peripherals, low frequency peripherals. Okay. 
here you can see the signals which are go some signals are going from master to slave and some signals are coming from slave to master okay you can see only three signals are coming from the slave to master p ready p slave error and pr data here you can see pr data is coming to the master okay that means three signals are asserted by the slave and all other signals are asserted by the master but this p reset n and p clock signal are the global signals okay this reset signal will be connected to the directly connected to the system bus and p clock is the global signal means uh, source is the system then operating states come to this operating states operating states we have a three states idle state setup state and access state idle state is nothing but the which is the default state of the apb interface that means if there are any transfers are not required that time it will be remains uh, remains in the idle state okay if the when a transfer is required that time it moves into the setup state in setup state it will the some appropriate signals will be asserted that appropriate signal is nothing but the p select signal here uh, it selects the slave okay in setup state p select signal will be asserted high and p enable signal should be zero in the setup state means uh, this setup state this apb interface only remains in the setup state for a one clock cycle and always moves to the access state on the next rising edge of the clock that means in setup state the interface the apb interface stays remains in the setup state for only one clock and uh, if in the next rising edge of the clock it moves to the access state i told you right p enable signal second and subsequent transfer when, when i am explaining about the signal description that time i told you that p p enable signal indicates that second and subsequent transfer here we can see uh, p enable signal indicates the second transfer right second transfer is nothing but second state and subsequent transfer means it moves to the access state okay when p enable signal is zero and um, when the transfer is taking place the whole transfer is taking place in the access state only so in access state p select signal and p enable signal both should be high that time only uh, it goes to the access state and in here the p ready signal comes into picture that means if our p ready signal that means slave is not ready that time it remains in the same state as access state so when p ready is high and there is no transfer is required that time it goes to the idle state when p select is high and p enable is high and the slave is also ready that time it goes to the idle state when there is no transfers and when the uh, when both signals are high and p ready is also high and there is a transfer required means next transfer follows that time it goes to the setup state it goes to the idle state when there is a no transfer means transfer is completed that time it goes to the idle state and when the next transfer has to take place that time it goes to the setup state from access to the setup state okay these are about the operating states also uh, this the uh, some signals must not change in the transition between setup and access okay and between cycles in the access state uh, what are those signals i will tell you this p address signal p prod signal p write signal p w data signal and p stroke signal uh, these are the signals should not change okay when it is transition from the setup and access state okay these are uh, signals should not change also exit from the access state is only controlled by the p ready signal here you can see right in access signal we have a p select and p enable signal this uh, if the if you if the transfer wants to exit from the access state that will be controlled by the p ready signal when p ready is zero it remains in the same state if p ready is one uh, based on the transfer condition transfer state status it goes to the another state okay these are all about the operating states uh, we will discuss the continue uh, discuss other slides in the next session thank you